Hey Wes here, thanks for joining me today, appreciate that. And today I am repeating an experiment. I'm trying to get this red hematite iron base paint to turn black and stay black. I've been kind of frustrating. So I've got a wood fire going here. This is the primary fire. After a bit, I'm gonna get it back on the fire and get it as hot as I can. And then I'm going to cover it with this stainless steel pot and cover that in dirt and try and seal it up uh, and try out a couple of different things and see if I can make a difference. And then also with these different paint samples I have in a, and I use these in a previous experiment, uh, see if they make any difference or not. So stay tuned and let's get busy. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Got a uh, primary fire been burning for a while. I got some charcoal down there. It's not great, but I think it'll be all right. I'm hoping. Kiln furniture to set my pot on. The base of this is mostly uh, cement bricks, but there is some sand down in there too, and then the bottom of this is all metal. So here's the pot. It's off of the ground. Okay, there we go. So it should get some air circulation underneath there. So let's build our fire up on top of it. So my plan today is to get this fired and get it pretty hot. And then kind of when most of the, the actual flames are done, but the pot is still hot. That's when I'll cover it. So there's the temperature, 830. On the other side of the fire, it's closer to 800, maybe the high 700s. Okay, this may be crazy, but let's try and take a peek underneath and see what that paint looks like. Looks really red to me, really red. So why hasn't it oxidized, or why hasn't it turned black? Interesting, it looks as it's sitting here that it's actually getting darker all the time. You know, as I've raised this up, it's gotten blacker. Why would that be? So I'm going to build a fire on top of this and see if that makes any difference. So it looks to me like the paint is pretty black right now. Much blacker than it was just a little bit ago. So maybe I'll take the risk and just go ahead and cover it here real soon. Okay, it may be a mistake, but I'm gonna cover this now. I can see the paint is black on the inside. So let's give it a go. Push it down as hard as I can. And I have very moist dirt here. And the plan is to seal it up as best I can. I wanted a lot of charcoal inside. I think that's not too bad. Just push it down, try and get as good a seal around that pot as I can. Okay, we'll see what happens here. Let's review what I tried to do here. Took a pot that was painted with iron base paint, hematite paint. In fact, I got different, eight different recipes. Fired it yesterday, didn't work out. So the plan today was to fire it. I fired it with wood, because I ran out of charcoal. I got it hot, so it was over 800 Celsius. My plan was to cover it up pretty quickly. And that's what I did. Uh, it was probably around 700 Celsius 
but I covered it with this stainless steel pot and then I used damp, almost wet earth to get a good seal and I made as big a seal around this as I can. One of the things that was really confusing though is I looked under the pot once it had fired and the paint was still red. And I still don't understand why that is, but as I lifted the pot up, I could see it gradually turn over to black. And so it was after that time that I actually covered it up. The idea here is that you snuff out the oxygen, the access to oxygen, the uh, hematite paint cannot absorb that oxygen, and so it stays black. We will see if that is actually the case. Now this is warm to the touch, but is definitely not hot. I've already removed most of the dirt so it's easily easy to get at. And this is the reveal to see if our pot is going to come out or not. One of the goals too was to try and cover uh, a fair amount of charcoal, live charcoal or coals uh, with it. And the idea with that is that those live coals will be using up oxygen and then starving uh, the hematite from having that oxygen. So we shall see what we get. Alright, so this is interesting. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, some things turned out pretty black, some things less so. And interesting looking at our paint samples, the different uh, recipes, those are different too. I'll bring those inside and we'll look at them more closely. Uh, so it got closer. This is about as close as I have been and I see some red but most of it's fairly fairly black. Uh, so let's uh, go inside and take a look. Well let, let's talk about this a little bit. There's some interesting kind of surprises. Uh, one was how when I looked underneath it and it was still red paint, even in the middle of the firing where everything was as hot as it was supposed to be. I am not a chemist. I don't understand this. And if any of you do, put something in the comment. But, you know, why is it that red paint turns black anyway? And what was going on there? Obviously, there was some change in the environment uh, that maybe pulled the oxygen out of that hematite. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, but that tells me that, especially with making bowls, that we need to make sure that that environment gets into the bowl, because oftentimes we fire these upside down, uh, to make sure that that paint is red. It would probably be less of an issue with a pot where it was exposed on the outside, and you could easily look at it. So that was one interesting thing. I think it's pretty clear, and lots of people have said, uh, you need to seal things up really well, and using damp dirt uh, worked well. I think just sand probably would not. It's just way too porous. But the biggest thing here is that I've changed my view about having additives and the importance of having the right kind of paint recipe. Because there were very clear differences today in the way it painted. Now, the, the firing itself... Not a great firing. Uh, however, I made progress. But the changes in these different paint recipes is really interesting. So let's take a look at that. Well, these results, I think, are really interesting. And I have thought for some time that there was maybe some additives that made a chemical difference in the way that the iron oxide uh, absorbed or got rid of uh, oxygen and maybe kept the oxygen from uh, coming back into it. Now, I'm not a chemist and if anybody is out there and has some good chemical ideas about what's going on here that would be wonderful. I'd love to see that in the comments. But let's look at this real quick. Number one and three had the least amount of reduction. This one is just simply iron oxide and some clay. This one is iron oxide, some clay, and a little bit of borax. I thought the borax might act as a flux. The ones that turned out the best, number two, this is primarily iron oxide, three parts, one part uh, clay, and then one part uh, manganese dioxide. And so that, I've often wondered whether manganese dioxide might be a flux of some sort. So 
Not a great reduction, but it made a difference. This is the one that was excellent. The, the blacks there are just phenomenal. And the difference there is it has three parts uh, iron oxide, one part clay, and one part copper carbonate. And the thing is, there is evidence in the literature of copper and manganese being in some of these recipes. Now, whether the native people actually purposefully added that or it was just something that was in the uh, the, car, the uh, iron oxide that they were using or the hematite, I, I don't know. But it does seem to make a difference. So if I were to make a recipe of my own right now, I would add a little bit of copper carbonate, a little bit of manganese dioxide, a lot of hematite. And this hematite turned out the best. This is one that came from the field a friend gave me. And it also looks to me like the beeweed, this is number four, maybe made a little bit of difference. Now, beeweed is great for getting your paint to stick to the pot while you're painting it. But maybe, because it has a lot of carbon in it, uh, maybe that acts as a flux too. So I would add some beeweed, which I would normally do anyway. Uh, so I think this needs to be repeated. Somebody else needs to give it a try, see what kind of results they get. Uh, and see if this really does make a real difference. All right, there you have it. Thanks so much for joining me. And seriously, if anybody out there is a chemist or has good knowledge about why does the iron oxide turn black, what impact do you think fluxes might have or other kinds of minerals like manganese and copper and carbon, how those might all impact it, I think those all could make a difference. Uh, but we need to repeat this experiment to see if it is something that's going to be repeatable. So comments of all sorts are always appreciated. Thumbs up are great. Uh, please subscribe if you have not. And until next time, this is Wes wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.